Willpower under the authority of wisdom light. He says that there are people in the same sequence that I told you about before who flew in the shadows of wisdom and reached the prosperity of willpower. He says that such people are able to do anything they wish to do. Their willpower is not in the authority of darkness. Their willpower is under the authority of wisdom light. I must tell you about this point again. In religions, in Abrahamic religions, as well as in the teaching of our mystics, in fact, we talk about two different things. Let there be no misunderstanding. We don't have two gods, there is monotheism, and there is one God, the one who created the universe, the Almighty that is beyond our understanding and does not contain in our realm of understanding, and we have no access to him in this way. But we have access to something else, which is confirmed by religions and our mystics and that is a droplet or essence of the God Almighty that has been loaned to the inner being of mankind. It is inside every person. Rumi says that when you found this droplet, this inner God is able to connect to you. That droplet knows the way because that inner essence. Rumi talks about a verse in the Quran and it is his spirit that blew onto him. It could connect you, but without that, you have no access to the Almighty. Rumi says that the people who were able to bring us this prosperity within them possess a power even to turn back the arrow after it flew away from the bow. These are some indications of what I had talked to you about before. Many friends that are of the opinion that in Masnavi, we encounter positive and negative energies. We don't say there are no negative or positive energies. We just don't have anything to do with them. All we say is that it gives you a master key, that you are a creator. You are the one who is the builder. You are the one who is moving the arrow or even turning it back, he says. There is such ability within every person. This path that Rumi is leading us is the path that takes us to that highway, larger than anything that you may think of. Even to say what is said and to return the released bow. These are neither prayers nor magic. I am telling you bluntly, these are embedded abilities within every person. For a moment, if today you return back in time to some 300 or 500 years ago, and if you talk about the person's ability at the age of technology, wouldn't they say that you are unwise? These are ignorance, superstitions, but see what abilities are within each person. Rumi says that there is something that he never even told Abraham, nor to Jesus, and not even the archangel Gabriel knows about it from the point of view of the fact that truth is different than everything else and that truth does not forget anything or ignore anyone, Rumi says. There are many things he did not speak about to them, but is talking to you about them. The thing that I hide away from Adam, I tell you, you the secrets of the universe. What he says is that you should not try to go and become Abraham. Do not try to go and try to become Jesus. Do not try to go and try to become Rumi. You have a you in you, an individuality inside of you. You own an inner you that is yours and yours alone. Go after that. Going after Abraham and Jesus they are not you. You are not Jesus. Abraham is not you, and you are not Abraham. With all the similarities you have with the seven billion people in this world, past and present, just know that there is something that is yours alone.
This is what you have to go after, the thing that enlightens you. Just don't get immersed in words. When we immerse ourselves in words, we lose the main issue, and then we imagine, in the illusion that we know, because we had not personally experienced before. What is it in works to prove and deny? These are just the surface of the story. All kings are slaves unto themselves. All people are dead to their dead slaves. When you see all these superficial powers, all such superficial strengths, each and every one of them are slaves to their own slaves. Kings have no power if there are no slaves. Isn't this true? All of them, in fact, must act in way so that the slaves would listen to them. Despite the fact that they are kings, despite the fact that they are powerful, but in the fact they are slaves to their own slaves. As Rumi, what I speak about is that I am taking you up with me to a place where you are a slave to no one. You are yourself, and you prosper from yourself. He says, the life of lovers is in death. In his second volume, Rumi says in a story that there was a person who wanted to gain a favor from the king. At that time, when you were in king's favor, then he would give you gifts, money, and such. But here, no matter what he did, he wore elegant dress, started a business for him, brought food to him. No matter what he did, the king did not favor him. At the end, he asked someone, what should I do to grab the king's attention? He told them, the only way for you to get the king's attention is to die. The king would pay attention to you when you are dead. Finally, he pretended to die and was dead, and then the king noticed him. We have nothing to do with that subject. Every person's religion is revered by him. Rumi just wants to draw our attention to something else, and that is no matter how much you put makeup onto yourself for God just to grab his attention, it would make it worse. Do you see where the paths are separated? Rumi says, why do you think by putting makeup on your face and by obeying his laws, you'd be able to draw his heart? There is no path. If you want to walk on this path, you do not put makeup on yourself. The best thing is for you to die. What does it mean to die? It means to be yourself. Meaning that, as I had talked to you before, to let go of all deceptions, such as becoming a good person. I am seeking his heart with a hundred sheds. He complains about boredom. I am doing a thousand different things that might grab his attention. But he gives me excuses that no, these are not what he wants. He is just stalling me. I told him my life and soul are yours to immerse. He said, go away, go. Don't tell me of such deceptions. Don't tell me all this. That essence is within you and knows you more cleverly than how your mind knows you. As long as you are not straightforward, without any dishonesty, until you die of all magic and deceptions, nothing would happen. Now, no matter how you want to become the good person, it won't matter how much you go after such stories. I don't know what you thought. Dear as my eyes, what did you think of the friend to be? Indeed, what did you think? Did you really think of him to be like many people who are deceived by people's appearances, or their cries, or their loneliness, 
or being a gentleman? How did you know the friend to be? Rumi explains a very important point here. The more you put makeup on, you gain his attention less and less. Oh, grand person, did you think of him to be so low? Because you bought him so cheap. Because he has given it to you so easily and is so close to you that you thought he was ignorant. As if he doesn't know better and would accept your cries and weeps. Whoever buys cheaply gives it away cheaply. As a child, you would trade a jewel for a loaf of bread. Rumi says, but be assured that when you forget your own worth, when you don't realize what abilities you possess, then who do you want to deceive with such makeup? Pay attention. These are words that must be paid attention to immensely. Just be yourself. You are good. Just don't try to act like a good person. Don't try so much to grab people's attention. Because no matter how you try to grab people's attention, he would not accept you.